Hello again everyone. So in this video tutorial we are going to do a very basic uh, compression cylinder test model in Abacus uh, to pretty much practice what we have learned the other uh, in the previous video when we discussed how to define the concrete damage plasticity model. And uh, if you haven't watched this video yet, the one about the damage plasticity model and how to define its parameters and what they mean, uh, please watch this before uh, you watch this uh, model, uh, this tutorial video for the compression cylinder test. So our model is very basic. Again, this is just to get familiar with how to model concrete in Abacus directly. So we have a cylinder 150 millimeter in diameter and 375 millimeter in depth. We have like we are going to simulate a fixed end at over here and then we are going to apply displacement control at the top until failure. So without further ado, let's go ahead to Abacus. So in Abacus right now I have a new model. Let me uh, rearrange these toolbars here that sometimes get a little bit messy so that we have a little bit more of real estate here to do our model. Okay, so the first thing, let's go ahead and let's start can create a part. So this I will call it the cylinder. So this is 3D part, deformable solid extrusion, the approximate size. Let's make this uh, 150, which is the diameter pretty much, because over here I'm going to draw the circle. So this is zero and then 150, this means I need to go to 75, which is the edge of my chart, my sketch. So I click over here, that's it, done. And then I need to extrude with the depth of the cylinder. So this is 375 millimeter and I click OK. So here you go, I have my cylinder. Uh, as we have discussed in the tutorial series before, it's always recommended that you partition your part so that the mesh uh, will look good later on. Here, uh, let me do some uh, partition just for case that if you have forgot how to do this. So let me cl click here and do partitions by specifying three points. So here you go. So now I do a partition, that's fine. Let me partition those as well. Again, using three points and do this, this, and that, that's fine. Let me do one last partition here uh, in the middle of my cylinder. So one, two, three points. Where is the third point? Oh, need to zoom in a little bit perhaps. Ah, here it is, all right, so create partition, right, that's good, we have a part partition, that's fine. Next step, we go to the property, we need to define our material, so let's click on that, let's call this concrete, that's fine, general density, so here, uh, density is very important to describe uh, right now, because as you will see, we are trying to model something that's going to sustain lots of damage and failure and in this case static analysis will not uh, be appropriate so we will need to do explicit analysis we need to use an explicit solver not an implicit solver and uh, since we are going to do a dynamic explicit analysis pretty much in the step then we need to define the density so the density here i can uh, let's do two e to the power negative nine, or maybe that's all right okay or you can use many of you use 2.4 or 2.2 it doesn't matter uh, so here let me go now for the mechanical let's go for the elastic so my material model again if you haven't watched this please check the previous uh, video on the concrete damage plasticity model so here for the young's models and the Poisson ratio my, yes, my concrete material has a Young's modulus of 20,111, like here. Poisson ratio, I'm going to assume it's 0.2. That's it, I define the elastic branch. Now let me go to the plasticity now. And in plasticity, I want to go over all the way down here. 
concrete damage plasticity i will click on that so this is the cdp uh, material model and then i need to define these parameters for dilation angle let me use 40 for eccentricity i'm going to use 0.1 for this ratio FB0 over FZ, FC0, I'm going to use 1 over 16. For K, I'm going to use 2 thirds, so that's point like a few sixes and then a seven, that's fine. For the viscosity parameter, I'm going to assume this is equal to zero. Again, refer to the pre previous video you know, if you want to know what those mean and why we are using these values over here. So that's all right. Then let me go to the compressive behavior. So again, this we discussed in the previous video. So here I already have my material model. I have this Excel sheet over here where I have an automatic Excel sheet that I put the parameters and then it generates all the values that I will need. So here I need to provide pretty much the compressive behavior. So this will be my stress strain data under compression. And this will start from the yielding point okay so that's this point over here so i just need to grab this data over here and then i need to paste it over here actually be careful here because here i was going to take the full uh, elastic uh, full strain but in this case i just want to take the stress as it is that's fine and then i need to take the inelastic strain which is this column over here so again we discussed this in the previous video let me fix this very small number and make it equal to zero in the beginning that's fine so that's it this is the compression behavior tensile behavior again the same thing i'm going to go from the cracking point so my, my peak point it's plotted over here so this is this blue curve I'm going to take this part i'm going to paste it here and then I need to take the cracking strain. So this is this column over here. So now it's called cracking strain, not an elastic strain. And then I paste this as well. So that's it. We defined our material, but now we want to define the damage part in the concrete damage plasticity. So let's add our damage. So since we are already in the tension, let me go over here and define from the sub options. Let me select tension damage. The compression recovery will keep it as one again refer to the previous video if you want more details and here i need to provide the values of the damage parameter so that would be this column over here and the inelastic strain or the cracking strain in tension so that would be all this column over here i paste it and then i say okay that's it i go to the compression tab and then again i go to the sub options and i think I check on compression damage, tension recovery, you can keep it empty or you can put zero, it's the same because this is the default value. And then I'm going to put the values for DC, the damage parameter, over here. And I'm going to do the same for the inelastic strain over here. Of course, as we mentioned in the previous video, I made sure before I copy those values that I compute the plastic strain under tension and under compression and I made sure that it's always positive and it's always monotonically increasing. So that's it. This now we're finished, we're done. We defined the entire material model. So I go ahead and go say okay. Let me define here now a section. So I'll call it section uh, concrete. Uh, homogeneous solid that's fine. Continue. Yes the material is my concrete okay now let me assign now this section to my part done yes so now it's green so now it's assigned the material model let's go ahead now let's go for the assembly so now I go for the assembly I will insert my cylinder dependent mesh on part yes that's fine we already have one part anyway okay here it is now I want to rotate it maybe just to have a better orientation. So let me rotate this around, uh, yes, this point, 90 degrees, here you go. Okay, so let me now put in the 3D, yes. So this is all right. Now let me go now 
for the step now i'm going to create a step i'm going to do a, a more detailed video on this uh, on dynamic split analysis so again we are not going to use a static general this will not work in this case because we are trying to model a material that the material is has a softening branch and in this softening branch this means you have uh, you will have conversions problem if you do a static general you are not going to do conversions beyond the peak point all right so that's why we need to revert to the explicit solver or the dynamic explicit step and the explicit solver doesn't have a convergence criteria it pretty much keep going uh, in time with very small increments so there is no convergence criteria so it will always work so that's why we use the explicit solver when we are dealing with problems involving like highly nonlinear problems or uh, something that involves like damage or uh, uh, severe damage pretty much I'm going to do another video on the dynamic explicit solver and what things you need to consider when you are defining a dynamic explicit solver because many uh, of you seems to use it without paying attention to many parameters of the explicit solver that can cause actually your results to be incorrect. So here, as always, I'm going to call this loading step. I'm going to click on continue for the time well time now is not irrelevant as in the static analysis now time has a meaning and uh, we need to be careful here with the time because the loading rate matters because if i do my loading fast you will get inertia forces and kinetic energy in your model so you want to make sure that this is a very uh, the, the number that you compute the time period reasonably so in my case, I have a 375 millimeter cylinder and I want to load this to like 1.5% or 1% strain. So this means I'm going to apply about 5 millimeter uh, in displacement at the top of my cylinder. So 5 millimeter, I would like to apply those uh, maybe perhaps 10 seconds. Well, it's not that slow, but... 5 millimeter in 10 seconds yeah, is reasonable. I'm not, I'm don't expect to get large kinetic energy or inertia force, but if I did, I can relax this even more. Uh, I'm not nonlinear geometry. I'm going to set this always on, no problem. Uh, I will not touch anything here for the incrementation or the mass scaling. Again, this will be a topic for another video. I'm going to say okay. That's it. I define my step. Now I'm going to go ahead. Well, right now, before I go ahead, let me now, since I'm already in the step, let me define the field output. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to edit. I'm going to actually save. Now, here it's important that you said when are you going to save data because you are going to get too many increments. So of course, you have, in explicit analysis, you get by the thousands or the 10 thousands. So I'm going to save every X unit of time and uh, perhaps every 0.2 seconds would be fine we'll get a good curve so i'm going to do 0.2 seconds over here uh, in the things that i want to save there is no contact i don't want to see any contact uh, i'm going to save uh, let me see velocities no i don't care about velocities or acceleration or by automatically by default these are selected because it's explicit analysis but again, um, I don't have these things because I'm, I'm doing a quasi-static loading actually using an explicit solver. So it's not really dynamic. So I don't want those forces and reaction. Yes, the reaction forces, that's right. Uh, nothing here with the volume. I will just, for the failure and fracture, so these are things that we will need later on because we are trying to model... Uh, we are trying to model... Uh, element deletion and failure so let me save those as well so damage and compression damage in tension and damage in shear and if i go all the way here in the state field username over here there is the status one let's click on that as well so that's it that's good for the field output let me click ok that's fine i'm going to define history output as well but this is later on once i define my reference points now let me go in the interaction. I don't have any interactions, but if you have watched the 
full tutorial series before we always apply things using reference points this is the better way to do things so let me create a reference point at the base and let me create another reference point at the top that's it and let me actually rename those so if i go here for the assembly in the features let me edit the name so rp1 let me call it rp base and rp2 let me rename it rp top over here and now let me do a rigid body constraint so i'll do that rigid body constraint so let me call this constraint top and here I'm going to select my top point and then I'm going to select the top surface so let me do that I could have created sets before but that's fine for the sake of this uh, tutorial another one constrain base continue I select my base reference point and I select the surface over here done okay so here you go now i have my uh, rigid body constraints now if i go back to the load so in the load let me select the boundary condition uh, see this is i will call it the base fixation and uh, this one i always like to do the displacement rotation i'm going to select the base reference point i'm going to lock everything pretty much at this point doesn't matter if you lock the rotation ones here in this case but that's fine let's do it anyway uh, we don't need to think about it let me create another boundary condition now so this is top displacement and uh, i'm going to say continue i'm going to select this point over here done and in this point i don't want anything to move the only thing is in the u2 direction in the y direction i want to apply negative five a millimeter as we mentioned before so this negative five will give us this one percent strain or like 1.5 percent strain in this range and this will be applied again in ramped but i cannot select here as part of the explicit this default ramp so let me create a new amplitude again if you watch the tutorial series we did an entire video on that so this is i call it ramp amplitude uh, tabular uh, this is another thing uh, it's always recommended if you are doing explicit analysis to do the smoothest step one all right so the smoothest step uh, make sure that you don't have any sharp changes in the load that can cause high acceleration or velocities but anyway we don't have this because it's monotonic anyway but why not let's do it smooth step anyway so this is with respect to the step time so at time zero the amplitude is zero and at time 10 seconds the amplitude is one i'm going to say okay and i'm going to select my ramp my amplitude here then i'm going to say okay that's it so now i have my load and i have my boundary condition we already defined that yes so actually the base fixation let me click on move left here in order to initiate it in the initial so that we have a stable um, model from the start so that's fine i'm going to say dismiss so now I have my model. Now, the last thing that we, know, we need to do is the meshing. So I'm going to go to the meshing. Let me check the, the global seed. Ah, yes, I need to select the part. Let me click on the global seed. Uh, let me try uh, 20 millimeter. Uh, that's fine, maybe 15. Okay, 15 looks reasonable. I don't want too much mesh so that this thing can run quickly. I'm going to say okay. Let me select here for the material type. I'm going to select that. I'm going to click on done. I'm going to select the explicit library. I'm going to use the linear uh, one. And from here, I'm going to select yes to the element deletion. Okay, so that's fine. We want element deletion and then we are going to say okay done so that's it for the meshing now for the mesh controls well that's the thing here so if i select everything and i say the mesh control actually i don't want the structured mesh i want the mesh here to be 
as worst as possible. So this is compared to what we mentioned before. You try to your mesh to be regular and symmetric as possible. Here I don't want that. So I'm going to actually use the sweep advanced front. I'm not going to use mapped meshing where appropriate. So I'm going to say OK and I'm going to mesh it. Well, even with that, the mesh looks really, really nice. OK, and everything seems more or less symmetric. Well, not exactly symmetric, but here you go. So why the reason I wanted to do that I don't like this. In this case, well, that's fine. We will run the analysis and everything will work, but because everything is symmetric and you are applying everything symmetrically, you are going to get the compression. You are going to reach your crushing compression pretty much almost everywhere in the cylinder, which is not realistic. In reality, typically you are going to get like some kind of sheer failure in your cylinder, right? So this, we are not going to get this shear failure cylinder in this case, since everything is looks symmetric. Most probably we are not going to get it. But anyway, I will run it like this, and then I will show you what you can do later on if you want to initiate uh, or trigger this uh, a more realistic um, failure mode in your cylinder. So you need to include some kind of imperfections in your model. All right, so let's keep this as it is right now. So now I have the mesh. I have everything ready. I just need to go to the job. So before I do that, we said that we want to include element deletion and material failure. But we, in our material property, we haven't defined anything related to failure. We define plasticity and we define damage, but nothing related to failure. The, the thing is, like in the CDB model, like from the interface, in order to define the failure, it, it's not included here in the interface. But you can add it using the input file, all right, using as a keyword. So what I need to do, I need to go here to the model. I do a right click and then I go to edit keywords. And then I am have an access here to the actual input file of the model. And then if I scroll downward, then after the concrete tension damage, I need to write this keyword, which is not implemented yet in the interface, which is called concrete failure. Again, refer back to our previous video on the CDB model to know what this means. And then you're going to say type equal to strain. And then we need to provide <coughs> four values. The first two values are pretty much the value of the concrete tension uh, damage inelastic strain. So I will take the last value in the data that I inputted earlier and then comma and then let me put the same one for the compression which is this one over here. And then I'm going to put the corresponding values of the damage parameters. So 0.86 and 0.83. So here you are. And I probably can uh, probably use like some kind of, uh, I can round it here so I can make this like 0.55 and maybe this 0.15, that's fine. I can round a little bit the values just to keep it clean. So that's it. And then I will just need to click on OK. That's fine. That's all. So this is just something that you need to put if you want to include complete failure of your material in order to trigger element deletion. Uh, that's it. This concludes uh, that. So now I just need to go to the job. I need to create a job. So I will create that. I will call it job uh, cylinder compression. Okay, uh, cylinder compression sym symmetric. I will call it symmetric just because the mesh is very symmetric and looks good. And then I will run another one with some imperfection. Then I'm going to click on continue. Parallelization. Okay, I'm going to use some of the processor that I have on my laptop here. And then for the precision, this is very important. You need to make sure that you select double over here. Otherwise, you could get some oscillations and problems in your model. So I'm going to say, okay, that's it. And I can submit, but let me, before I submit, let me set 
the work directory i forgot to do that and i forgot to save my model actually so let me set the work directory i'm going to go here that's fine i'm going to say abacus tutorial tutorial concrete that's fine i'm going to select this as my work directory all right and i'm going to save my model since i'm already at it so this is i call it concrete compression test okay and just need to submit and then i will check with you once the analysis is concluded okay so the analysis concluded actually didn't conclude i just terminated because lots of damage happened already in my model so let me go ahead and show the results and uh, so here are my results uh, let me go from the beginning so you're loading so what's happening here you go the stresses are increasing increasing you hit the compressive strains uh, str uh, crushing strength which is like 29 and then now you are getting pretty much you are in the softening branch that's why the stresses are going down again after you reach the crushing strength so now you are going down and you're increasing in strain but you haven't reached the failure the complete failure criteria yet and then here you go so at one point so this is what i was telling you about because i have everything is symmetric so damage happened in the same time pretty much in across the, the cross section of the cylinder at the same time and at different location on the longitudinal direction. So that's why at one point, here you go, if I look in the x, y direction, so this happened like, again, simultaneous failure at different location, which again, not a very realistic failure mode so of course with explicit analysis you can keep going i mean now you start having your elements flying away but uh, that's why i stopped the analysis but you see like the explicit analysis it will keep going it doesn't matter what's happening in your model so anyway so okay that's fine i mean our model works but this failure mode is not realistic because everything is symmetric again and in reality you don't have this kind of symmetry that's why you typically get a shear failure mode or something like that something different so how can you trigger that we, we need some imperfection in the model so i thought about it and i think the easiest uh, perhaps uh, way that we can do that let me go back to my part and let me uh, let me do something here i'm going to to do a small cut at the end of my cylinder so that pretty much I will assume that the surface or the bottom surface of the cylinder it's not exactly flush uh, with the ground it's not exactly horizontal not cut horizontally like I will add a very small um, inclination to it so let me do this cut how I'm going to do it let me first create an, a plane an offset plane from the x z direction I need a plane in order to draw my cut sketch and extrude it so i'm going to do a plane parallel to xz i'm going to do an offset at the diameter uh, sorry the radius of my cylinder so 75 so here you go so now i have this plane over here and now i'm going to use this to sketch so i'm going to do a cut extrude using this plane and something that appears vertical to the right okay this one and here we go uh, let me let me double check here how did we vertical and to the right maybe perhaps this one yes okay so now i have an idea of the, my orientation okay so let me draw here something i'm going to do pretty much a cut like a very i'm going to cut this surface i want to have it with a little bit of inclination so i'm going to draw it a triangle pretty much and extrude it so I'm going to do this from negative 75 and half of the height is that's I think 187.5 
so here is a point that's good and then we need another point again at 75 and at 187.5 so we have the other point and then let's go down let's do this inclination like something not big enough so maybe five millimeter only so 75 and 182.5 perhaps okay so that's here you go so and then i close the triangle so you see here i'm going to extrude this so this is a very very slight uh, thing that it's realistic this could happen actually in your in reality like this thing it couldn't be exactly flush so this could happen so that's fine and then i'm going to say done yes so i'm going to do that and i'm going to through all do an extrude cut i'm going to say okay that's it i'm done that's fine and everything pretty much stays the same uh, perhaps i need to check yes so because i did this cut at the base so the reference point at the base need to uh, is now it to redefine re to be redefined so let me delete it and let me create a new reference point at the base so let me call it here and now let me rename it rp base and hopefully that's it perhaps let me check the interaction here at the base if it's ruined yes i need to reselect so the reference point is here the regions are these regions over here and then i'm going to say done okay okay let me check at the load if perhaps i need to redefine the boundary condition at the base as well yes so the region let me see select reference point okay that's it and uh, perhaps uh, since we're at it yeah we need to remesh perhaps i'm going to use this time a more refined mesh because maybe 10 millimeter a more refined mesh will be good with in addition with this eccentricity we, we will be able to create some uh, imperfection in the model and create something that's uh, more realistic in this case uh, let me select make sure that sweep advanced corner. okay so that's all right yes so okay let me check that my mesh element is correct before i start running this i don't want to waste time running the wrong thing so element deletion yes we have it on linear that's all right so everything looks fine so i'm going to save this again and then i'm going to go to the job and let me create a new one uh, and then or maybe just a copy of this one and then let me call this with imperfection okay that's it and then let's submit it and as always let's catch with you once the analysis is concluded all right so now the analysis concluded uh, so again i stopped it since already i get lots of uh, deformations so if i go ahead and click on results so as you see here this is much better if i go here from the start and then I move so now I'm getting some some asymmetry you see here because of the this cut that we did at the base and now because of that now we are getting some uh, fracture like in shear mode here uh, crushing of the concrete and then of course the entire thing is lost at one point so that's it so this concludes our tutorial so this again shows you the importance of having uh, some kind of imperfection in these kind of problems if you want to generate some kind of realistic cracking in your model uh, one other option like you can change the mesh you can have a more refined mesh with uh, an unstructured meshing technique so that you can get this kind of modes but here it is so again uh, the last thing that you can do of course you can actually so here you go you can get the fracture over here 
the last thing that you can do, you can always um, extract the data and you can plot, of course, the force versus uh, deformation for your model and uh, see how it will behave, which would be similar again to the stress strain behavior that you that we modeled for the material property. So thank you again for watching and uh, we'll see you again in another video.